Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Tom tipped me off to a story that I think you'll find interesting. From Electrek by Fred Lambert. Tesla avoids your warranty if you try to power your home with your electric car battery pack. There have been some issues with the cold weather lately, people losing power. And a lot of people are wondering what other ways there might be to get power to your house. Of course, you could have a generator, for instance, that would do it. And some people thought, wait a second, I have an electric car. The electric car's got a big old battery pack in it. And if that battery pack's got electricity in it, is there a way to get that electricity into my house? And so it's something I think has occurred to a lot of people. But the problem is that your warranty booklet from Tesla says specifically that you cannot do that. And strangely, other car companies have said the exact same thing. So it's making news now because it's Tesla. But this is something that many standard warranties contain. So uh, Tesla might be avoiding your warranty if you try to power your home with your electric car battery pack. And that's something that more people have been looking into following power outages in some areas in the U.S. While Tesla vehicles are not equipped with a bi-directional charging enabling vehicle to grid or vehicle to home features, there's actually a way to power some devices using your Tesla vehicles. So the Tesla does not have like just a typical outlet you can plug something into and power that way. But it's apparently not that difficult to do. It's as simple as plugging a 2000 watt inverter to your car's 12 volt battery. So some other people pointed out there's other ways to do it, such as uh, connecting to the 12 volt system through the penthouse under the back seat. And I assume they're not talking about a magazine there. Through the low voltage architecture, you can get the power from the main battery pack and power several devices on the inverter. It's something that Tesla owners have been looking at lately following some tough weather in some regions in the U.S. which have caused power outages. Now, one Tesla owner described his own setup on the uh, Tesla Owners Club Portland Facebook group, and he said, if you are out of power from the storm, you can power parts of your home from your car. Here, I'm using a 2,000-watt inverter from Harbor Freight for $170. Connect it to your battery. The shorter the wires, the better. Then I have an extension cord to my gas furnace to power the blower and furnace computer. That alone draws about 1,100 watts. Then I still have enough for my refrigerator and a few lights. Now, a setup like that on a Tesla can provide power for a few hours, but this man said that Tesla apparently doesn't like you doing this. Over the next few days, the vehicle started sending alerts that the 12-volt battery needed replacing, despite the shop saying that the battery seems strong. So it's like the car knows something's up. (laughs) When the car knows something, Tesla knows something. The Tesla service center said the battery needed replacing, but they actually found this post on the Facebook group and said that his setup was voiding the warranty. So uh, there is a relevant section in Tesla's warranty, and it's under the warranty limitations or exclusions and limitations. And a lot of people know that you get a warranty of the brand new car, and the warranty is described in a warranty booklet. Now, the warranties are often summarized as, you know, 336, 550, or whatever it might be. But if you go to the warranty booklet, you'll see it's much, much more complicated than that. And they've always got exclusions and limitations. So, for instance, if you take your vehicle off road and beat it up that way, that might not be covered under warranty. Uh, If it's a Jeep, you can argue about it. But if it's, you know, a Cadillac, you might not be able to argue about that. So under warranty limitations, if you go down a ways, it does say that the new vehicle limited warranty does not cover any damage. Uh, or malfunction directly or indirectly caused by, due to, or resulting from normal wear or deterioration, abuse, misuse, negligence, accident, improper maintenance, operation, storage, or transport, including but not limited to any of the following. And down near the bottom, it says, using the vehicle as a stationary power source. Using the vehicle as a stationary power source. So it sounds like they kind of anticipated this. But I can tell you that if you go look at owner's manuals over the years, They often use that exact same phrase. Now, you might say, but Steve, why would I use my car as a stationary power source? Well, it goes back to the days when people actually would use their cars for all kinds of things. And I've seen images, and you can find them on the internet, of farmers in particular uh, who would take a vehicle out in the field and, and then set the vehicle up in such a way that they could run a belt off of one of the rear, you know, off the rear axle of the vehicle, for instance. Uh, and then just run the car all day long to you know power their sawmill or whatever whatever it is they're doing out there. So there are ways to do that, but of course the manufacturer of the vehicle is going to say, well, we didn't design the car to sit there all day long and do something like that. And 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 you can argue all you want and say, but you know it it doesn't hurt anything. Well, the point is that this limitation is in this booklet when you bought the car, 
And if you didn't like that limitation, you're free to not buy the car. And I, I always get pushback on this one because people say, but that's not fair. Well, you don't have to buy their car. They don't have to sell you the car. So they say, as a condition of buying this car, we'll give you a warranty that contains this exclusion. So using the vehicle as a stationary power source is something that is specifically among the warranty limitations and the exclusions and limitations. Now, Tesla's warranty states that you cannot use your vehicle as a stationary power source, but Electrek's take, what they say is, if you're going to do that, don't post it on social media <laughs> because Tesla will find it. So the writer of this story, uh, again, it's Fred Lambert, said, I've had issues with my warranty before with Tesla. I understand them in this case since the vehicles are not made for that, but it's a shame we see a lot of automakers building bi-directional chargers into electric vehicles these days to directly access the main battery pack. Just today, we reported on the unveiling of the new Hyundai Ionic 5, which is equipped with that technology. Tesla has been reticent in the past about integrating that capacity in its vehicles, but Tesla CTO Drew Baglino recently said the automaker plans to implement it in future vehicles. So I don't know as much about electrical engineering as, as some people. I won't even pretend to be an electrical engineer. But the point is that there's an electric car. It's got a battery pack. It's got a motor. It drives down the road using electric power. And the idea that you could, if you wanted to, in a pinch, park the car and run some wires to it and use that battery pack to power your house, yes, it's a possibility. But it runs directly afoul of the exclusions and limitations within the warranty for the Tesla vehicle itself. Now, some people might say, wait a second. Let's go back to the exact wording because it says this new vehicle limited warranty does not cover any vehicle damage or malfunction directly or indirectly caused by, due to, or resulting from normal wear or deterioration, abuse, misuse, negligence, accident, improper, blah, 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 blah. And then it says, but not limited to any of the following. And the implication is that using the vehicle as a stationary power source would only void your warranty if it caused damage or a malfunction, right? That's what the beginning of that big, long sentence says. But the problem is that with a fairly simple setup, that is a battery and a motor, if there's a problem that comes with the battery later on down the road, they're going to say, yeah, the problem with the battery is caused by the fact that you're using the vehicle as a stationary power source, which we specifically told you not to do. Now, if you could go into court and prove that using it as a stationary power source didn't hurt it in any way, didn't cause anything untoward to happen to the car, didn't cause any extra wear and tear, didn't cause any malfunction, didn't cause any damage, didn't cause... But that, of course, is the problem you're going to find yourself in. Because the way these things work is... in you always have to do this in real life. Don't, don't be hypothetical and, oh, it's Rico. <laughs> you have to think about this. So let's suppose that you do this, you plug your car to power your house. Later on down the road, your car has problems. You bring it in for service, and somehow they go, something wrong with your battery, and we think it was caused by you using it as a stationary power source. And by the way, they know this because you post on social media, along with the photographs of your lunch and of your husband, who's the greatest husband on earth, or of your wife, who's the greatest wife on earth. <laughs> you know, Facebook. So they say that you did this. They, they're not going to pay for the warranty claim. You are not in a position where you have to file a lawsuit against them and litigate this issue. Now, if you file the lawsuit against them and litigate this issue, you could win, but you could also lose. And so somewhere down the road, let's assume you go in front of a jury, and let's assume that both sides have done everything as best they could. That is that you came in and said, I have this warranty, and they refused to work on the vehicle under warranty. And then Tesla's attorneys get up there and through witnesses and so on go, yeah, vehicle had a warranty, but it says specifically don't use the vehicle as a stationary power source. And our experts testified that using it as a stationary power source put some kind of extra drain in the battery, which caused the problems that they want us to fix under warranty. We don't have to specifically because it's in our warranty. We don't have to do that. Now, you would have your experts who get to say, no, we've looked at this and that had nothing to do with it. Well, you're on the jury now, and you've got to pick a winner. Uh, is there a guarantee the jury's going to go on your side? They may or they may not. Jurors do all kinds of things. <laughs> Often, things that are unpredictable. 
So the question is, number one, could you get an attorney to take the case? Number two, if you filed it, could you get past all the motions they'd file to dismiss it? And if you got to a jury and a fact finder, which you, which you probably could in this case, uh, would you win that? And if you could win it, then great. If you lose, you're out all the time in trouble. And by the way, uh, finding an attorney who will take this case might be kind of tough. Because the first thing I'm going to tell you is we cannot win this case without having an expert who will testify that what you did did not cause that damage. And that's going to be somebody with credentials who's going to cost a lot of money. And I can tell you right now that I've hired experts for trials before, and they can be very, very expensive. So as of right now, word on the street is that Tesla will void your warranty if you try to power your home with your electric car battery pack. So think twice before you do it. And as Electrek points out, if you do it, don't brag about it on social media. <laughs> Fred Lambert wrote the story. Tom said it to me. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll just talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Happiness is meeting an old friend you haven't seen for years and picking up where you left off.